Starting webinar, connecting live. Welcome everybody. We are gonna give people an opportunity to jump in. I'm seeing some participants joining us now. Look at that, your numbers are growing. Congratulations. So uh, my name is Susan. I am a volunteer with the PACAC organization. I'm here to um, facilitate the panel today. Um, I just have a couple quick housekeeping announcements and then I will turn it over to our presenters. So the first thing, if you are new to Zoom, uh, not likely in, in, is, in this October, but uh, you will see a Q&A button. Um, that is where you can type your questions to the presenters. Your mic and camera is off and your mic and camera will remain off for the duration of the program. So it is only through the Q&A button that you can ask your questions. Um, there are additional sessions. There are additional um, sessions throughout this week and next week. You can see a list of those sessions at pacact.org slash virtual. Um, this session is being recorded and it will be available um, for your viewing at a later date at pacact.org slash virtual. So I am going to um, turn off and turn this over to our presenters. Okay, well, hi everybody. Thank you for joining Animal Crossing, a college pathway for your love of animals. Uh, my name is Kelly. I'm one of the admissions counselors for West Virginia University. And I think we are so excited to be able to present a session. On a set, we are represented by several different colleges, each have some unique features. But as an admissions counselor, we always love to work with students in terms of what do you like? What are you good at? How do we turn that into something you could do in college and then make a career out of? And I think hopefully all of you that joined today have an interest in animals in some aspects. So we hope you're going to be informed today on what you need to be looking for, what you could be doing now, what do our different colleges offer. So we're excited to have everybody here and we're going to go ahead and um, as I move to our next slide, just wanted to quickly um, give you an overview of all three colleges that are here, but I'm just going to talk briefly about WVU. You can see our map that is located on the right hand side of your screen. West Virginia University is located in Morgantown, West Virginia. So depending on where you live, um, it might be closer than you think. Um, we are a large division one public institution with 21,000 undergraduate students. Uh, during our presentation today, primarily Primarily, we're going to be sharing about our Morgantown campus. We absolutely want to mention that our Kaiser campus, so that is in the, the far right, the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia University, has about 1,300 students and also has some animal science options. And I'm going to turn it over to my other WVU colleague to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Muncy. I am the WVU Davis College recruiter. So the Davis College is where all of the majors that we're going to be speaking about um, at West Virginia University are housed today. So everything is in the Davis College. I am the Davis College specific recruiter. All right, so, um, and I am Maria Cabrera. I am an admissions counselor over at Delaware Valley University. Um, I have been working with DelVal for about five years and we are actually in a suburb of Philadelphia, um, about uh, 50 minutes from the center of Philadelphia. Um, we are a small school, so we have about 1,900 undergraduate students, 2,100 with our graduate population, but we do have a lot of acres in, of land um, because we do have our, animal, um, our animals right on campus. So we have about 1,000 acres of land um, with our Gemmel and Roth campus that host our sustainable agriculture labs and then um, also our livestock and dairy facilities. Um, and we do have about a 13 to 1 faculty to student ratio, so classroom sizes are pretty small, about 18 students on average in the classroom. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Emily. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Wilson College. Uh, Wilson is located in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, about an hour south of Harrisburg, PA. Uh, we are located on 300 acres. Those do encompass our Fulton Farm, our equestrian center. Uh, we have about 1,500 students um, combined. 
average class size is 15 and student faculty ratio is um, 12 to 1. And I will pass it over to my uh, co worker. Hi, everyone. Uh, my screen says I'm Emily McGaugh, but I'm actually Ashley Horn. <laughs> So I'm also um, an admissions counselor here at Wilson. I'm really excited to uh, be here with you guys today. So I hope you look enjoying our presentation. All right, so I will start. Um, and again, my name is Maria. And um, we will begin our presentation talking about kind of like careers that are available if you're interested in working with animals. So as a lot of you might know, um, you know, considering being a veterinarian is a career um, where you can work with animals, but there's so many other areas that focus on working with animals and animal management. So working with um, animals in conservation areas in their natural habitats, um, working with zoo animals in captivity, clinicals, um, aquariums, production animals, game commissions, wildlife biologists, um, working for the government, equine areas, lab research, working at a university, um, private industry, or ag education or agribusiness. These are all areas that can make sure that you work with animals and then follow other passions that you might have. Um, so it is not limited in what you can do in working with animals. So um, if you are interested in continuing on with your education or doing more kind of like vet tech, um, it depends on what you want to do when it comes to how long you want to do schooling for and where um, that career might take you. It could be um, something that you study for maybe two years or you can continue on um, and do many, many years and then continue on to go into veterinary school or um, work in the field. So um, it will really depend on you, but we are really here to talk about um, those tracks that you can focus and go into um, so you can make the right decision for you. So we can continue on with the next slide. I don't know if anybody wants to add anything to that, but um, if not, then we can continue on to the next slide and talk about a bit about uh, majors in college. So in the following chart, you can see all of our different majors for our, our different schools that focus on the animal sciences um, and focus on uh, working with animals in a specific way. So. Um, there are many, many areas where students can work with animals and pursue a certain kind of focus. So you can either learn about animal behavior, nutrition, genetics, anatomy and physiology of animals, reproduction, animal handling, uh, field methods, local diversity, um, birds, um, methods and procedures and the technical aspects of everything, learning about animal diseases, and then also how to kind of like um, you do technical labs where you'll be able to identify all of those kind of diseases and um, maybe pathogens and things like that. There's also minors that students can focus on. So you can focus on maybe working with larger um, production animals and then adding on a small animal science minor. So it really um, you will have the opportunity to focus in all different areas so it will be important to kind of look at the catalog of each individual school and see what each major entails because there's there could be one animal science major at a specific school that encompasses all or there could be a specific kind of major that will focus on solely what you want to do like our zoo science program or maybe wildlife and fisheries at west virginia um, or equine journalism at wilson where you'll learn to um, write about different kinds of um, horses or horse programs or events that are happening in the horse um, equine world so um, it'll be up to you and kind of doing that research will help in um, how you want to pursue your career. All right, we can continue to move on. And internships. So internships are very important. I mean, working with animals, um, it's great to learn from a book, obviously getting that fundamental and foundations, but it's, you know, working with animals, the great um, 
thing about it is that you get to have that hands-on experience. So having that hands-on experience for whatever university you attend is going to be crucial. Um, so whether you want to work at a zoo or conservation area, livestock farms, um, do research at John Hopkins at Wilson. So there's going to be ways that you can focus in working with animals, obviously getting that fundamental in the classroom, but being able to practice in the field will be um, essential for you to learn about management, um, for you to learn about animal behavior, um, for you to learn about nutrition um, or any kind of areas in the in the government that if you want to work for individual states in the PA Game Commission, uh, USDA. So there's so many ways that you can enter these fields. Um, and for a lot of us, we have connections with these partners. And so it's not like you have to go out there and find these internships on your own because we have built these partnerships. Um, it will be um, easier for you to kind of look through um, which opportunities are open for students, but definitely something that you want to pursue with the internships to build your resume and it will make you stand out um, with graduate universities and also when you are searching for employment. Okay. Um, and then highlighted classes for certain majors. So this is really the fun making sure that you are looking at your schedule. So from freshman year on, looking at which classes you'll be taking. So, um, I mean, who doesn't wanna take a class at West Virginia for service dog training, right? Where you can make sure that you um, teach uh, dogs commands um, to make sure that people are safe, making sure that they know that if maybe a person is having an anxiety attack, they know how to um, use that command to make sure that the their their human is safe, or maybe learning about wildlife conservation area or canine techniques, or doing your zoo internship at Del Val, um, or animal diseases and nutrition at Wilson, or applied horse training. Um, so these classes all focus on different things, but um, it, when you think about your courses throughout the semester, you want to put emphasis into what you're doing because all of these classes build upon each other um, and making sure that you graduate successfully is going to make sure that um, you have to make sure that you grasp all of these concepts and the faculty are really there to help you and that's what's important making sure that you connect with your faculty and you take advantage of all of those classes um, while you're taking them all right Anymore. And then I think uh, someone was going to talk about study abroad, so I'll continue and pass it off. Thank you, Maria. So hi again. It is Lauren from West Virginia University, and I'm here to talk a little bit about the study abroads that are offered at all of our different institutions. So at Delaware Valley University in England, they travel to an equine rehabilitation center. They go to Tanzania to a Serengeti to the Serengeti National Park. They have an ecotourism trip to the Galapagos Islands in Ecuador, and they travel to Belize to learn large animal veterinary skills at different vet clinics. At West Virginia University, we have a one week spring break Costa Rica trip every year um, in our wildlife and fisheries resources program. We also do a veterinary school tour provided through our Davis Michael Scholars program where you travel to multiple different um, vet schools all across the Eastern United States. We have a Western Europe trip going to different greenhouses and farms. We have a Trinidad trip through our sustainability scholars where you learn environmental and agricultural issues. And we've got the WVU abroad in Estonia where you learn introductory veterinary skills. That is a five week trip where you do three different clinical rotations. At Wilson College, you can travel to Mexico. You can go to the Smithsonian or Costa Rica. You can go to Thailand. Um, where you can go on a safari internship, and you can travel to South Africa with Vets in the Wild. Next, we're getting ready to play a small social media clip provided by Delaware Valley University. Um, I want everybody to keep in mind that we all have social media at all three of our institutions, so please feel free to look us all up, um, follow all of us, and at West Virginia University, we've got a specific Davis College social media 
um, page with Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So if you want to learn more about our animal program specifically, keep in mind you can check out the Davis College for more specific information. Kelly, go ahead and play the video. Thank you. Okay, let me see if I can get it tuned up. And if not, what I might do is I might put it, maybe we will play it at the end. So let me see that if I can do great. a quick, unless I can do a quick screen share, because I do have it up and it is awesome. It makes me so happy to see it. Can we see it now? Yep. All right, so, and there was no sound, so please don't, uh, we, we opted for no sound, um, but I'm going to go ahead and we will jump back to, fully back to the, the slides. Awesome, thank you so much. All right. So we have listed here some different clubs and organizations that you can take part in as a student at any of these three universities. I'll go ahead and highlight just a couple. At Delaware Valley University, you can be part of a Block and Bridal Club, Dairy Society, Ducks Unlimited, an equine team, Ornithology Club, or Pre-Vet. Each school does have a Pre-Veterinary Club. Um, at West Virginia University, we also have a Block and Bridal and a Dairy Sciences Club. We've got Collegiate 4-H, um, and then we've got multiple different judging teams for different species of animals. And at Wilson College, they have an equine facilitated therapeutics club, different riding teams, um, and a veterinary nursing club. So it is important when you come to college to take part in a club or an organization of your interest. We always encourage students to take part in clubs because it's a great networking experience. Um, and you can just do really fun things related to what you are interested in. All right, next slide, please. All right, so why be engaged in research? At each institution, no matter where you go, you will probably be part of some kind of research, whether you just hear about it or you participate in it. Um, and research can take on many forms. Research is definitely part of your overall college experience. It can be part of a class. Research can have internal or external opportunities and many more things. Research is supervised by faculty that provide direction and they can create mentorships. You might present research findings in a variety of formats such as PowerPoints or different presentations. You might get paid for your work depending on the research. You can earn credit hours and you can receive many other benefits like networking um, through doing research. Research experience is valued on different resumes and applications, and research opportunities are endless for students who demonstrate academic promise. So here we have listed some of the different research opportunities at each of the different institutions that we have with us today. At Delaware Valley University in their small animal science labs, you can do research on fish, mites, or rats. You can do biomedical research, pharmaceutical research, and then they have listed here um, some different specific research opportunities for you to get involved with. At West Virginia University, we are an R1 research institute, so everything that we do is centered around research. We have livestock and equine research that you could participate in as a student with us, including identifying immune mechanisms in crossbreeding sheep and nutrition and feed with poultry. We have a working feed manufacturing mill. We are one of the only universities in all of the United States that actually have a working manufacture, feed manufacturing mill. So that's a pretty big deal to us. We collect saliva and manure samples and we analyze a lot of feed samples for different species of animals. And then with our wildlife and fish, if you're a little bit more interested in that, we collect macro invertebrates, we electroshock fish, misnet birds, and we study wildlife genetics, um, just to name a few. And at Wilson College, they have a student research day. Thank you, Lauren. So 
as you look at um, prospective institutions, one thing you want to be aware of is what facilities will you be involved in? Where will these be located? Where some of your classes will be held? So um, if we look at Delaware Valley, they have animal science labs, South, um, South Campus. So they have livestock there, um, dairy, equine barns, um, the swine center, and then um, sustainable agricultural areas. So again, looking at West Virginia, they have 13 farms and forests throughout West Virginia, including the um, animal science farm um, and their university forest and organic farm. At Wilson, we have our Hawthorne and Cook Arena, our Fulton Farm, and our Veterinary Education Center. So if you guys look at all three of the institutions here, you are able to see on the map where each facility is located and where you will most likely have a class or two to get that hands-on experience in relation to the particular major you're interested in. So how can your application stand out? So as a lot of you are going through the process right now, there's a couple different opportunities. So one option can be essays. So your essay allows your admissions counselor um, to see what you're able to highlight. So you can showcase this opportunity about your animal handling um, history or what you look forward to. Um, maybe you talk about a volunteer experience that you participated in throughout high school as well. Also, you wanna be sure to challenge yourself academically, perform well in your classes um, throughout your high school career. Colleges will evaluate your high school GPA. Also, by challenging yourself, if you're interested, maybe looking at participating in dual enrollment, taking a couple classes that will transfer into the institution you're looking at. Um, we look at everything when it comes to the application process. Also, you want to be sure to highlight uh, your leadership and extracurricular activities you're a part of, maybe part of 4-H, writing opportunities outside of the classroom. Again, like I said, um, volunteer work where you're in a um, humane society. And engage with university and colleges to demonstrate your interest and share your story. So as you're looking at the process now, reaching out, looking at those institutions, um, seeing what majors they have that you're interested in, reaching out to your guidance counselor, setting up a Zoom visit, um, visiting campus. There's a lot of opportunities to connect with the schools you're interested in and learn more about these programs. Job shadowing. So what you can be doing now. So um, definitely talking with your guidance counselor, um, your staff to see if they have connections going out on your own to the local um, equestrian center, um, humane society and getting that volunteer or job experience. Same goes with volunteering. Um, ranging anywhere from government agencies like the DCNR, farms or clinics, um, inviter, environmental um, education centers, and there's so many more. The list just con continues. Um, seek out those opportunities offered through 4-H, FFA, Envirothon. Um, look at class selections. But the more you're gonna learn about is through um, your major and looking through the school's catalogs. As Maria has mentioned earlier, if you visit our three institutions in particular, you will be able to go through the course catalog and see what um, classes you could be gearing up to take that will allow you um, to prepare you as you transition from high school to post-secondary. This can also get you an idea as well, looping back with the enrollment, um, looking to see if there's any of those general education courses you can take that can um, segue in with you as well. You can also email faculty members at institutions um, regarding the coursework. So we would like to thank you for joining us today. Um, here are our, our, um, is our contact information for everybody who was on the panel today. Um, Maria from Delaware Valley, Lauren and Kelly from West Virginia, uh, and Ashley and myself from Wilson College. So we can um, open the floor up for questions at this time.
Can you guys each just talk a little bit um, more about what um, program, or I guess I should say what courses are specifically offered for students that are looking to become vets at your institutions? Yeah, I can start. Um, so we, um, because we have a couple of different animal related programs, there's going to be courses um, or majors that already have the prerequisites that you would need to go into veterinary school. So small animal science, animal science, pre-professional, but essentially you can major in any kind of um, area and still do the prerequisite classes and you'll be able to um, apply to veterinary school. So some of the courses include learning about animal diseases, so animal pathology, um, anatomy and physiology, um, that or chemistry, um, biology, um, and then some of these courses um, that you will take in the freshman uh, freshman year, um, like I mentioned in one of the slides previously, you're, there's going to be some courses that are particular to your your major, but there are some courses in the beginning that are more general education classes, and for you to be able to prepare better be, while you're in high school, um, making sure that you un understand some of these mathematical concepts is going to be important. So, college algebra, a college writing are going to be some of the classes that you'll take in the beginning, as well as um, biochemistry. Um, so these are classes that regardless of maybe some of the majors, um, when you're doing a science kind of background, um, you'll be able to, um, to take across the board. So even if you change your major, those classes will translate to the other major as well. Anybody else want to add a little more to that? Um, yeah, I'll add just a little bit more. So we have all of those classes that Maria talked about. And then we also have a, sp a couple specific veterinary classes where you learn medical terminology um, to help when you are in vet school in the future. So, but we also have animal physiology, nutrition, health, handling, all of those kind of classes. And kind of segueing off of the conversation as well. Um, with Wilson, there's two ways if students are interested going on to veterinary school. We have um, veterinary nursing and then bio pre -vet. So there's two ways. Um, within our veterinary nursing, there's three concentrations to choose from. But if you're looking at the vet school portion, um, there is the biology uh, track. And, you know, that allows a lot what Maria said too with the sciences like biochem, um, biochemistry. But more or less you'll have topics in veterinary as well as um, nutrition, microbiology as well. Um, I just want to add, because I think we each can also probably touch a little bit on that. I think if you are planning on you know, doing your four-year bachelor's degree and then applying to go to vet school, something that's so important is maintaining a fantastic GPA during your time in college. Um, you know, having a, you know, a great GPA is just the standard to applying to vet school. So at least at WVU, we offer a ton of tutoring services to students, um, including something specific for our veterinary science students. Um, we also have writing centers on campus, several academic centers in our libraries. So I don't know if we each maybe want to, um, or if uh, Wilson or Del Val would like to touch on that as well, but I think that's such an important aspect as well. When you think about, and I always say when you think about, you know, your eight years or more of schooling ahead of you, your four years of an undergraduate, it's about getting all this great experience and taking these courses, but it's about doing well because everyone has a 4.0 when they apply to vet school. That's not really a separator um, to apply to vet school. I mean, having that research and other things also helps separate, but everyone has a great GPA. And it's also important to maintain a good GPA in all your classes and that English class and that general education class as well. But um, so that's a little bit about some of our tutoring services on campus. They're, they're all free. You're gonna find that's true at most colleges that colleges offer tutoring services to students. I always say to students as well, it's not always something we have, I guess the advantage to do in high school. Not all high schools offer tutoring services. Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of hearing someone explain a concept differently. You know how sometimes you have that teacher in high school that they just click with you maybe more than others. I think that's such an advantage of maybe you're sitting in the chemistry lecture, um, but then to go to the chemistry tutoring, you're like, boy, that just, 
that clicks for me or hearing it a second time or explained in a different way. I also know a lot of our students use the tutoring as accountability. They know that, all right, Sunday night, seven o'clock, that's the chemistry study group, it's tutoring, but they kind of treat it like a study group because you are way more, um, way more independent in college in terms of you're not in class as much, you do way more outside of class. So also a lot of students will take advantage of the tutoring is like, yep, this is some of my, my study time as well. Um, but definitely know if you are thinking that you are wanting to be a vet and are gonna go on to, to, vet, to apply to vet school, doing well during your undergraduate time. And I know this is a lot, because you guys are like, I'm just trying to get through high school. I'm just trying to get through each day. Um, but you know, as you think long-term and um, I'll let anyone else comment about tutoring or academic support that's available on their campus. Yeah, I think uh, uh, something I just wanted to add was that not only are the uh, resources obviously important, but also utilizing kind of like your um, faculty um, is going to be helpful too. Many of our faculty and all of these colleges that I've ever known about, they have office hours. So um, utilizing those office hours outside of the classroom time to maybe um, get to know your professor, or ask them about any um, questions that you might have about the lessons that you didn't get, then it's going to be um, important that you um, build those connections with your professor and ask those questions that you might have not been able to ask during class time or if you just want something explained a little bit more. Um, and then that it's also helpful for internships in general. Um, some professors are in the field or have connections with organizations and they recommend uh, students all the time. So, um, and um, for the class um, aspect of it, um, you, if you know, you know yourself as a student. So if you know that you struggle with maybe some chemistry concepts or things like that, um, maybe it is helpful that over the summer before you know you're about to take some of these courses that you uh, read up on it a bit, or maybe you, you watch a couple videos or you take a community, a class at a community college or a junior college and um, kind of prepare yourself with these concepts. So if you know that you need some additional help with math or writing or biology or chemistry and your path, you, this is what you want your path to be um, and you want to be successful in the classroom because it passes by super, super fast. You have to dedicate um, a lot of hours to some of these courses that you prepare yourself. So maybe you want to work over the summer um, and then maybe the other half of the summer you take it upon yourself to maybe read a, a book about maybe some of this concepts or maybe do some drills online to continue to keep your mind fresh um, when it comes to mathematical equations or writing an essay or just anything that will help you practice and keep you motivated. Um, and, and speaking in motivation, that's also going to be something that um, you have to think about. So some of these classes, you're going to think about what does this even have to do with taking care of animals? And you have to keep that in mind that some of these concepts build upon each other so that you eventually are able to identify, oh, okay, this two chemical compounds will make this, and this could make a medication that can help to combat this specific parasite that's killing my livestock. So all of these build upon each other. So when you see, okay, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, like I, I don't know what this has anything to do with this. That's how you have to think about it, that eventually um, you'll maybe make sure that an animal recovers or that you know um, that this kind of uh, medication is going to help this kind of animal. So or being able to manage it. So everything builds upon each other. Yeah, I don't know if anybody has anything else to add. I just also want to pop in. Um, uh, please feel free again that Q&A, a function of Zoom. Um, you know, there, there, and this can even be an admissions related question as well. I think you know, we, we definitely wanted to, to talk about animal sciences related to our schools, but maybe your question is, well, what GPA do I need to apply to your college? Or um, when can I engage next with your college? So please know that um, in the Q&A, pop, 
pop any questions in um, because we know that when you've taken your time to virtually engage with us today, we are so grateful and appreciative of that. So we want to be able to help. But something too as well, I know we were focused on animal sciences, but any and all admissions or college going questions, we're, we're glad as admissions counselors to help with. I could add some, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Emily. I was gonna say, I'm the next sorry, question is, um, do, you have, do you have to be an equestrian major to join the equestrian writing teams on your campus? No, you do not. Um, you can be in any major, at least at Wilson. Uh, we do have the five writing opportunities. Um, you can actually even write a horse for a gym credit. So it's completely up to you. You don't just have to be in the major to participate in any of the clubs or organizations. And that's generally across the board as well. So there's a lot of opportunity to try new things. And that's one other fundamental part of college too, is you want to step outside that comfort zone. Um, go ahead, Ashley. I don't know if you want Oh yeah, just one more question that I had. Um, when is the best time that you guys recommend to study abroad? Um, it depends. I mean, uh, sometimes sophomore, junior year would be times that are um, better to study abroad. Uh, there are different ways that students can study abroad. They can study abroad with a faculty-led program through a class. They can go over the semester, summer, um, so it really does depend. I would say making sure that your courses are going to be lined up and you're graduating on time and the university that you want to study abroad um, to offers those courses so that they transfer well. You're going to have to do this all before you even leave, um, but making sure that the course when you come back is going to be available and you register on time so that you're graduating on time is going to be important. And then we just got, oh, were you going to answer Lauren as well? Um, yeah, I want to throw something in there too, if that's okay, Ashley, thanks. Um, so at WVU, most of our study abroads are what you would typically think of when you think of a study abroad um, with our animals. They aren't take a whole semester and go out of the country. Instead, our one week trip with wildlife and fisheries, that's a Costa Rica trip. They take 12 students and it's just over spring break. Usually our students do that sophomore or junior year. Um, and then the same with all of our other trips, they occur in the summer mainly. Um, so that sometimes will make a difference. They don't occur spring, fall. They occur in the summer semester. So you're taking that and only that. Usually you're not taking other classes with it. Um, and they only last about a month. Kelly, do you wanna add anything to, about that? I think I want to echo just both what Maria and Lauren said. I think that's a great question, a great conversation to have with an academic advisor when you are sitting down to schedule your freshman classes. Um, hey, I'm interested in studying abroad at some point because it does take some planning or the credit's going to transfer and for each college and depending your major and when is a study abroad option being offered. So I'd say that is even a from the start when you are talking to your academic advisor for the very first time to schedule your freshman fall, say, I think I want to study abroad at some point. So from the beginning, I think it's good to have that conversation to plan out when you might want to do that. Awesome. And then we had one question come on, come in. Uh, when you say vet nurse, is that the same as vet tech? Yes, that is the same. Um, they are doing a national push for the change from vet tech to vet veterinary nursing. Um, it's just changing it to be a little more professional. So that's something that you'll probably see on the national level start to trickle in uh, within the next year or two at a lot of institutions. So um, yes. And then the next question is, uh, do your programs offer lines to vet schools specifically? I've looked into your programs and a lot of them are specialized. Is there any way I can engage in programs at your schools that support the long haul to vet school? Um, I'll start and I first want to say, hey, Catherine, big shout out the long haul. You bet um, it is because it is a long haul to vet school. Um, so I appreciate you steps like this and what you're doing right now um, are, are definitely helping hopefully to make that a little bit lighter of a haul. Um, so at WVU, our, um, our pre-vet program does have some contract seats, um, but they're specific for West Virginia residents. Um, so if there isn't anyone in here that is a West Virginia resident, um, there are some contract seats with, I believe, Mississippi State, 
and Maryland, Virginia. Uh, so yes, there is some opportunity, but I will say overall, our vet school acceptance rate um, is 73%. Um, so the, the national average, I believe, is in the 40s. Um, so in terms of students that are applying to vet schools, it's over 70%. We also have something called the Aspire Office that helps students, whether it's vet school, law school, med school, help students that are going on to other graduate or doctoral programs. So a lot of students take advantage of the, of the resources that the Aspire Office offers. So um, not an exact contract seat, but definitely some great support services in place. And I'll let Lauren fill in if I had any gaps there. Yeah, no, I think that sounds great. We've got the 13 contract seats for anybody who is a West Virginia resident. Um, and then we've got multiple different options um, for help for students who are non-West Virginia residents who go to WVU. Um, and then we do through our Davis Michael Scholars Program, the tours to multiple different vet schools. Um, so you can kind of network that way as well. Okay. Emily, did you wanna speak on Wilson? There we go. Um, we do not have any specific um, agreements, articulation agreements with schools, but um, this hands-on with our program will set you up. I do have a, um, a couple students, we've actually had students go abroad for veterinary as well as domestic within the U.S. So there's a couple different options when it comes to that. Yeah, with us, so we do have an agreement with Ross, which is in St. Kitts, I believe in the Caribbean, um, but there are students that go all over that I apply every year. So um, more local being Penn and Cornell. Um, but if you apply and you have a great GPA, um, typically you get into a vet school or more than one if you have a great portfolio. And that really, um, from what we know that has that faculty tell us, if you have animal experience and great uh, portfolio, then, you know, you, there shouldn't be a reason why you're not getting in, you know, if your application is great and animal experience is going to be the determining factor, definitely. So any animal experience that you get while you're in your undergrad is going to be crucial. And that's the other thing, just kind of going back to vet school. Um, not only are they going to be looking at grades, but they want to see full picture too. Like just what you're doing with this application process now going into college, they want to see the involvement in your activity that you've done at college going on to vet school, like leadership positions as well. So a lot of um, different components looking at that application process too. Thank you, ladies. And then just quickly, we have uh, one last question. Uh, what's the GPA required for each school for our students to get in? So we, at Delva, we don't have a specific um, GPA that guarantees. We look at the overall application. We are test optional right now for 2021. I'm not sure about 2022 in the years on, um, but we look at the overall application of the student, um, making sure that the essays line up, um, they're pr proofread, um, and you're talking t about, you know, something that you're passionate about, either from the prompt or you answer the questions that we have for specifically like our zoo science program, like what do you hope to do? Um, or when you graduate or how can DelVal help you or what's your animal experience. So overall application definitely. Um, I know some schools might say maybe a 3.0 and above or so, um, but it really does depend on your overall application. So if you know you haven't done so well all your four years of college, maybe um, there's going to be a different path. Um, for you, maybe community college first, or it really does depend on the individual applicant um, and your potential. Um, and that's for us specifically. 
Yeah, I want to say as well, I think that's always a great conversation to have individually with, with an admissions counselor from any university you might be considering. Um, at WVU is also test optional for 2021. So that means we will review your application without a set of test scores on file. Um, however, uh, there, then, then there becomes a little bit of a dynamic. Um, it does depend on GPA and how you scored in, in core classes. Um, so I'd say overall, if you're somewhere at least at a 3.0, you should be fine if it's a little bit lower. Um, but as someone who um, you know, gets to work with a lot of students, higher is always better because a higher GPA means that you're going to probably receive a better merit scholarship from us. So I always say to students, it's absolutely about getting admitted. So that was a great question. But I think for most of us, there's also a conversation about being admitted, but then about making sure that college is affordable. Um, and that's, that's, a, that's a conversation as well, that GPA as well as extracurriculars might be factored in. So if you have a 3.0, you'll, you'll probably, be, probably be okay, but we also have other admission requirements in terms of making sure that classes have been met. Um, and that's always a conversation an admissions counselor's glad to have with you. And I just wanted to throw, there, uh, throw this out there as well. Wilson has gone test optional for um, the 21-22 academic school year as well. Um, and it does. Um, you're looking at a three or higher where our merit range is, um, but we do take a holistic approach as well when reviewing the application. All right. Thank you all so much for your wonderful, informative presentation. Uh, thank you all to the attendees for joining us. Just really quick uh, before you close, or when you close this window, there's going to be a quick four question survey that will appear. If you kindly take a few seconds and respond to that, it helps PACAC offer better, uh, more and better quality programming throughout the year. Um, there are more sessions available, pacac.org slash virtual to sign up for more great informative sessions like the one you just heard. And the recording of this will be available at pacac.org slash virtual. So thank you all so much. Thank you panelists for your time. And uh, we will see you again at another session. Have a great day, everybody.